Greetings all, it's your boy Perry Walker and I'm back with another video. And before I get going on the topic, I would like for you guys to please smash that like button so that it'll help me out with the YouTube algorithm and click the subscribe button if you haven't already done so. Also, click the notification bell so that you will receive my videos when I first release them. And again, thank you so much for watching my videos. I greatly appreciate you for that. And I don't take any of you for granted, and I'm truly grateful. Now, over the past few weeks, I've been reading the first few paragraphs from each chapter from my book, I Choose to Win, which I wrote and had published back in late 2021. My hope is to share my life's journey and experiences and how I overcame the battle with low self-esteem to encourage those who may be going through difficult times in their lives, and indeed, we're living in difficult times. I've also left a link where you could pick up your digital copy or hard copy of my book in the description below. Without further ado, Chapter 3, Into the Wilderness. But the man who had gone up with him responded, We can't go up against the people because they are stronger than we are. Numbers 13, verse 31, Holman Christian Standard Bible. Do not harden your heart as in the rebellion on the day of testing in the wilderness. Hebrews 3, verse 8, Holman Christian Standard Bible. God allowed the children of Israel to wander in the desert after they challenged his faithfulness towards him. Like the children of Israel, we too can find ourselves in their position due to unbelief and doubt. There are also times when God will allow us to go through extreme trials to prepare us for his service. We are reminded of this when we observe the life of David when he was pursued by King Saul, and Joseph whose brothers sold him into slavery because they were jealous and envious of him. Whatever series of events lands you in a wilderness experience, know that God's purpose is for you to come out as pure gold. One of the first things the Marine Corps does during boot camp is to strip you of your civilian ways. They immediately impose order and discipline by attempting to break you down so that you can be rebuilt in the way they want. They take your civilian clothes, they shave off all your hair, confiscate all jewelry, etc. All your rights are stripped away and you are identified by a number on your t-shirt. For three months of your life, you undergo one of the most grueling trainings on earth. They challenge you physically, mentally, and academically with the hopes of identifying the weak. The weak will undergo motivational reconditioning. If the reconditioning does not work, you will be released under an other than honorable discharge. Indeed, the Marines are the few and the proud, as only a few out of each batch of recruits ever make it out of boot camp and earn the coveted title of Marine. You may be asking, why would anyone subject themselves to such abuse? For one, most recruits have no clue to as to what they are in for before boot camp. Secondly, most recruits have a false sense of preparedness. They think that everything they learned from the civilian world could help them make it through their training. It's not enough to be physically strong or academically experienced. The recruit must be disciplined, mentally sound, and willing to obey orders without protest. This is where most recruits fall short. The main goal is to prepare the recruit to be a well-disciplined fighting machine that will develop the endurance to persevere under extreme hardships to accomplish the assigned mission and purpose. As mentioned before, to achieve this, the recruit must be broken down, rebuilt, and prepared for duty. In some ways, God's approach to developing us for His service it's not far from the above analogy. Now, God does not use the devices of man. He takes us through his refining fire, which may come through a wilderness experience. The Bible says, 
Jesus was led by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tested. The children of Israel wandered for 40 years in the wilderness because of their complaining and unbelief. I ended the last chapter with my salvation experience. When I became a Christian, my days of wandering and being in the bondage of sin was over. Still, I found myself wrestling and struggling in my salvation. A few Sundays before I left the Middle East after the Gulf War, a minister preached a message out of the book of Joshua, chapter 24. In that chapter, Joshua is near death. He is delivering his last exhortation, calling the people to complete obedience to the service of God. Joshua boldly declares that he and his household will serve the Lord. The minister went on to say that our battle will start when we get back to the States, where we would have access to all the devices that could cause us to compromise our faith. This puzzled me. For almost two years, I lived under the challenges and stress of war. The minister also said we had been shielded and isolated from the temptations being over in the Gulf. We did not have easy access to the pleasure of sin that America offers. In light of this, he urged us to choose who we were going to serve. Now, in the back of my mind, I said to myself, not me, I'm in it to win it. Let me backtrack a little right here. Remember I described the process that the Marine Corps took to ensure that the recruits were well-trained for war? Although I successfully completed boot camp, there were some aspects of the training I did not pay too much attention to. One was the NBC, Nuclear, Biological, and Chemical Training, which I showed a complete disregard for. After all, when I joined the Marines, fighting a war of any type was the furthest thing on my mind. So I did not see the point in paying too much attention to this part of the training. Before deploying to the Gulf, we were briefed that Saddam was known for using chemical weapons and there was a high probability he would use them on us. As you can imagine, this did not sit well with me. Death by chemical weapons was known to be agonizing, and the victims usually suffered greatly before dying. Even if I survived a chemical attack, its effects are crippling and long-lasting. One night in September 1990, Saddam launched several Scud missiles potentially loaded with chemical weapons at our camps. As the Patriot missiles were knocking the scuds out of the sky, I was running in terror, trying to remember how to correctly put on my gas mask. The training I had neglected in boot camp crippled my knowledge, and I didn't know what to do. Thank God there were no chemicals loaded in the scuds, because if there were, I probably would not be here today. Had I chose to pay attention to my training, I would not have been unprepared. So it is when it comes to our spiritual life. We need to heed the instructions of God so that we can be prepared to face the fiery darts of the enemy. Obeying God's instructions safeguards us from the seductive draw of sin. The Bible says it like this, put on the full armor of God, so that you can stand against the tactics of the devil. Ephesians 6, 11, Holman Christian Standard Bible. Okay, ladies and gents, that about wraps it up for this session. And if you like what you've heard, please leave a comment in the comment section. I'm also considering doing a free book giveaway of, of my book. So that if you're interested in something like that, please let me know in the comments. And again, thank you for listening and I greatly appreciate it. And until next time, be blessed.